Welcome to Ascend TV Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Cassindi, and my co-host will be Will Burnick. We'll be talking to Madhu and Jaya from Inclusive World, which is a person-centered organization that focuses on skill development and employment for differently abled individuals in the Bay Area. So let's get started with my co-host, Will Burnick. So Will, what about your shirt? For, 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 this, for our Halloween show, I am wearing my Joker shirt. As, as many of you know, <laughs> The, the Joker is, is Batman's worst enemy. He, 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 he constantly strives to, to get rid, to defeat Batman and take over Gotham City. He's, he's, he's the most well-known villain in, in the Batman franchise and, and Jack Nicholson's most famous character. Oh, well, do you want to kick off? That, that's fantastic. I love the Halloween spirit. Did you want to kick off with the first question? So Madhu, tell us about your background. I grew up in India. Uh, born and raised in India. Um, I did my uh, bachelor's and master's in um, computer science in India. And I moved to San Jose in uh, 1999. And I started working as a software engineer at IBM. Um, <clears throat> and I worked at IBM for almost 12 years. And I, I wanted to take a short break um, so I took a year long sabbatical and I was wondering, you know, what I should do during my year off. Um, and I have a couple of friends who, um, who have kids on the autism spectrum. And um, these kids, uh, I mean, they were kids then, uh, they are young adults now, uh, very talented, you know, one could make uh, like 500,000 piece uh, puzzles. You know, he could just put it together in, in a matter of hours. And, and the other one, she could, you know, make beautiful jewelry, um, you know, and she, she could uh, weave, you know, she was very talented in the arts, but th they were at the verge of getting out of the school system. And um, the parents were looking for uh, day programs that, that could take their skills and uh, turn that into um, meaningful uh, vocations that you know they could pursue, but they could not find uh, day programs such as that. Most of the programs that were available were all one glove fits all, you know, mostly based on social um, aspects. Uh, so uh, since these were my friends, uh, they approached me. They said, "Hey, you know, you're going to just take a year off. Why don't you do something?" Uh, for our kids, something that's uh, based on their uh, interests. So um, I wrote to a couple of my friends, uh, Deepa, who's uh, another co-founder, and Swapna, she's also another co-founder. And we said, why don't we start a, a small business unit, an arts and crafts small business unit. We could produce arts and crafts items and we could sell them and share the profit. Um, this way, uh, you know, uh, youth with different abilities can showcase their talents and, and also make some pocket money on the side uh, and, and probably figure out what they want to do next. So that is how we got started. And, and I call, uh, you know, this whole thing a, a divine accident because, you know, I was a software engineer and I was planning to just go back to work after a year of taking off, taking a break, uh, but this just, you know, happened to, uh, you know, come my way. And, and it was supposed to be a very short project, three months, but the experience we had working with youth with different abilities, it just blew our minds away. You know, we, we went um, as an empty slate, not knowing what to expect and came back, came out of it blown away, you know, to, to work with uh, differently abled individuals, you know, their enthusiasm, uh, you know, getting through their challenges every day. And, and then we said, okay, why don't we try teaching programming? Because, you know, a couple of us were techies and that's what they, we did for, you know, our uh, daily bread and butter. So we, we taught programming and uh, one of the students that we taught programming, she, um, you know, she's non-speaking, but, she walked us because whatever we taught her, she wrote, you know, she could write code 
computer code and and we we understood that she she got what we taught her and and then we realized that there's so much more to this and and there is such a huge gap here because once um, you know kids get out of the school system uh, there is such a huge gap for finding uh, finding programs that can match skills and abilities uh, you know to uh, to interest and and really help differently able hone on that Absolutely. Um, that that's great um, and that's how we got started that, that was the beginning Thank you so much. Um, I'm Jaya. Um, I um, help Inclusive World uh, in the role of a strategy advisor. Um, my journey with Inclusive World is not too long. It's been about a couple of years. And um, um, professionally, I'm a banker by training. I did that for a couple of decades and moved into the nonprofit space. And uh, I've you know, been with uh, uh, several organizations that have looked at looking at education and livelihoods um, for different um, groups uh, in the community. And um, I met Madhu over a conference uh, at the UN and, um, and, and we just got started about, you know, what is the space, what are the challenges and how, how much opportunity is there to explore uh, as a community to, you know, um, to make uh, uh, opportunities uh, grow much faster and wider uh, uh, for uh, children on the spectrum. Um, so um, uh, I really loved that space because that was some, something that I had um, not had the opportunity to understand and be part of and to contribute. So I jumped at the opportunity that Madhu gave of getting to know the organization. And since then I've been with them. Uh, so it's my pleasure to be here and share our story along with Madhu and Usha. Hey, every <clears throat> hey everyone, my name is Usha Narayanan and I got in, uh, involved with Inclusive World a couple of years back when my son started volunteering at Inclusive World. So instead of dropping him off, I, vol I also volunteered in the arts, arts and crafts class when we were in, back in the days when we used to have classes in person. I really like the mission of the uh, inclusive world, you know, and the focus to enable, uh, you know, differently abled individuals to the focus on being able to lead a productive, uh, you know, life of acceptance. And it opened my eyes and I'm using my time to volunteer uh, for the inclusive world. And uh, currently I am involved in uh, uh, editing the newsletter content and uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, contributing more in different spaces. Thank you, Madhu. That was so interesting as well. Let's turn now to Jennifer, who is our book correspondent, who I believe has a question as well. Yes, I have a question. I'm wondering what are some of the most common challenges that your clients have in securing employment that's right for them? Because employment that's wrong for them can often can sometimes be worse than no employment at all. And how do you help them overcome these challenges and find employment that is right for them? That's a great question, uh, Jennifer. And, and I think that's the, um, the crux of the whole problem here uh, because um, there's plenty of employment out there, but finding the, the best match um, is the biggest issue. And um, I think that the biggest issue is that uh, employers do not understand uh, the accommodation needed for an employee. And these accommodations are not hard to do. I think uh, what is most important is for employers to truly understand what the accommodations are and, um, and be willing to, um, you know, uh, to provide those accommodations. And, um, and, the, the way we uh, approach this pro uh, approach this problem is we create uh, something called a one page profile which i mentioned earlier so it's it's a one page document um, describing the person so that when um, when a differently able potential uh, employee goes for an interview uh, people don't look at the disability first but they look at who is this person uh, wh what are their talents? What are their interests? Uh, what is important to them? And, how, and what are the supports that they need? 
Um, so automatically we uh, switch people to look at the people first, their interests, their abilities. So look at them in a positive light. And, and then, uh, and what support, uh, you know, uh, is needed so that uh, they can be uh, most, uh, you know, productive. And, and we do that within our organization as well. When, uh, when a new student enrolls, the first thing we do is the one, one page profile. We, we look at what are their talents, what is important to them so that we, we will be respectful and how best to support them so that we provide the, the best environment for uh, most positive learning. Um, so I- would like I, to I, add to that, Madhu. Um, the, uh, also the important part of that process is um, do a frequent check-in on what's working and not working because it's a pretty dynamic environment uh, for our members, uh, whether it's in a learn, you know, classroom setup or a work, uh, set up. So uh, what we do is we have a quarterly review cycle with everybody involved. So if it is like in a classroom, we're talking to the student, we're talking to a parent, we're talking to the buddy, we're talking to the, you know, the lead who's running the class, similarly in a workspace, so that we are able to really understand dynamically what's working and what's not working and focus on improving what can be done better to enable that work to happen the way our member and this are just to complete the job or uh, you know can list. so i think uh, you know having a periodic check-in is a valuable part of keeping us uh, the en entire environment conducive to a productive uh, space that's fantastic. Couldn't agree more. Thank you, uh, Madhu, for the talking about the one page and how that's so important for employers and to Jaya about the feedback, because that's critical. It's really critical. So what are the steps that we would need to take to become a member of your organization? Uh, you can go to our website, uh, www.inclusiveworld.org and uh, look at our programs and there is a button under uh, programs to register. Um, you fill out the registration form which will ask you some basic questions about your name, your email, uh, what programs you would be interested in. And also we have a set of uh, something called discovery questions which is for us to know a little bit more about you, your interests, uh, your goals. Uh, and uh, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, so that you know, we, we learn a little bit more about you. And once that is done, uh, our uh, volunteer uh, member coordinator will reach out to you and, uh, and talk to you and, uh, and find out what classes you may be interested in and, and uh, you know, assign you to a few, uh, classes that you would like to take, talk to you about the timings, you know, all the logistics, you know, whether you are available during the time, give you all that information. And once that is done, um, our uh, person-centered services team will get in touch with you to get the one-page profile done. So, and, and that's a series of um, interviews uh, with, not just you, but your family, your support system to understand better your goals, to understand you, what is important to you, how best to support. Um, and, and the one page profile document is shared with uh, the, the class teachers. Uh, and then based on the one page profile, a buddy is mad, somebody who's similar in personality and interest with you a typical buddy is matched and, and then the classes start and then you have fun learning. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, like Jaya mentioned, every quarter uh, we do a, a check-in to say, what's working, what's not working? What do you like about the program? What, what do you think can change so that your learning experience can be better? And then towards end of the year, we have an end line assessment uh, where we look at uh, how did you do? What did you like? What do you want to do next? Uh, uh, and then we'll offer 
options, choices. And if we don't have uh, the programs that we are you are looking for, we'll try to find you a partner. Uh, we have several partner organizations that can help you. Uh, so, uh, so that is how uh, you know the whole process goes. You know, so thank you again for everything, Madhu and Jaya and Usha. So Inclusive World sounds like such a wonderful person-centered volunteer group helping people find their find their best self, you know, in terms of working and, and finding jobs. So coming in from your private sector backgrounds and, you know, you know Madhu, you're at IBM and Jaya, you're you know, in banking, you know, what is your advice here? And what is, you know, with this deep expertise, would love to hear, you know, advice. Um, my advice would be uh, pretty much what people um, in the private sector in high tech um, follow. Uh, one thing is definitely create your one page profile. It's a one page document about yourself that represents you in, in the best positive light. Uh, create your resume, very important. Uh, you know, get help in creating your resume and your resume doesn't mean that you need to have a college degree or you need to have many years of work experience. Volunteering experience will count. Uh, even hobbies that you, that you pursue will count. Uh, so create your uh, resume and um, get a mentor. Um, this is what most people uh, in high tech and private sector do get a mentor, uh, an unbiased person who will look out for you, will look out for opportunities. Uh, it could be your neighbor, it could be your uncle or somebody in your faith-based group, uh, but somebody who can you know, be there for you, look out for you and set up maybe quarterly meetings with your mentor, you know, set, set up goals, um, yearly goals, uh, you know, <clears throat> Think about, so this is end of the year, right? Think about, okay, 2022 is coming. Uh, what are my goals for this year? What do I want to learn um, this year? How do I want to, you know, better myself? And set those goals, uh, have somebody, your mentor to keep you honest and also to open up uh, opportunities for you. And, you know, uh, organizations such as Inclusive World, you know, we're always there to, uh, you know, to help and, uh, uh, you know, walk with you along the way. Great. Jaya, anything to add? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, you said it all. I would just say it's good to have a lot more fun than get so, you know, uh, I think that's an important part of the spirit we try and keep in our classes and with our, you know, volunteer groups is is to really be in the moment and give our best. I think just being present to that, taking each day, is is a great um, perspective to walk in. Usha, would you like to share some? I, I think personally, for me as a volunteer with the organization, I have learned a lot. My eyes have opened to a, a lot of different aspects of thinking, which probably I was not aware. And as uh, Madhu mentioned earlier, right, we, uh, I, as my children grew up, you know, it, I, it, I did, I was not exposed to uh, differently able, uh, able kids. My children were not exposed to that opportunity, I would say. And um, as they grew up, and, you know, as my son volunteered, I mean, his perspective of, uh, you know, uh, the whole lookout of the world completely changed. So he is, is still extremely thankful for being part of inclusive world where he looked at the world from a different spectrum working with his buddies. So I think uh, that is something that uh, we all can actively work on to how to make, uh, you know, everybody, kids, kids, how to start off with kids being aware of uh, different, uh, differently abled aspects of uh, the human aspect of people as opposed to just looking at uh, things from an academic perspective. Absolutely. And I think there's a huge talent pool that's, uh, that's untapped. Uh, you know, we are just ignoring the, you know, the, the talent uh, of different people with different abilities you know, we are all unique, um, 
but you know th there is um, some kind of standard that somebody set on what people should be and you know and the people that you know go outside of this are ignored so I, I think it's time to break that wall you know those walls of barriers and and really you know create an inclusive society um, and I think as a world uh, it will be a much better place. Absolutely what you have said resonates so much and I really wanted to you know to, to send our appreciation and rec and and you know how inclusive world you know it comes out of you know this sounds like it's rooted in the Indian American community South Asian community and it but yet it's open to everyone and how wonderful that is and how important that is because it really does resonate with the whole concept of inclusive world and holistic and person-centered um uh, you know I would I would love to understand more about that and also, you know, how, you know, volunteers have, have come to this group. You know, this is, you know, I think what you, what you have built, what you are building is, is really special. And I wanted to understand more for our, 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 our viewership. Absolutely. Um, our, uh, you know, when we named our organization Inclusive World, uh, we, we, uh, we chose the word inclusive because um, we realized that, you know, that was a key part that was missing. And, and that's why we um, enroll volunteers who are 13 and above, uh, because all our students are 13 and above. Uh, and the idea is to mentor uh, uh, youth 13 and above, uh, expose them to uh, interact with people of all abilities and, and really um, get an appreciation and understanding of people with all abilities and and with the hope that when these kids become adults it, they have better appreciation you know uh, they, they are they are more inclusive because now they have interacted they, they they know what people with different abilities are capable of and and when they become future leaders they, they are going to create companies, they're going to create uh, projects, they're going to create opportunities where everybody is included. And, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a small drop in the ocean, but uh, we, we are starting out that way. And uh, we are already seeing that we, we have had uh, kids um, who came into our program and um, after volunteering for four or five years and they, uh, they have chosen to uh, learn uh, to pursue neuroscience, uh, to pursue um, counseling in, in college, um, and they come back and you know tell us you know when they, when they come back home from college, uh, they they talk about how um, they have met uh, the, uh, people with different abilities in college and what they have done you know to to stand up for them. You know they've all become upstanders e even at school you know, when they have witnessed any bullying incident, incident, they have, you know, developed the courage to be upstanders. So, um, and, 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 and that is our hope that, you know, we can change the mindset. And like Usha mentioned, you know, when the kids come in, uh, you know, the, the parents of the, uh, the volunteer kids that come in, uh, that, uh, they, they are also watching the, the transformation in their children and, and they are observing. So, so this way, you know, we, we slowly spread it across. And yeah, we, uh, the organization was founded by people uh, from the South Asian descent. And, um, and I think we, we have attracted more volunteers from South Asian uh, because if you come to South Bay, <laughs> you know, the South <laughs> Asians are the majority here, but uh, the organization is open to all. Um, definitely, um, we are non-racial, uh, non-judging uh, you know, organization. So we, we would love to see people from all ethnicities come and join us. And, um, and the, the more diverse we are, uh, I think the, the better we are. So right now, let's turn to reports by our cultural correspondent, Stacy, followed by our book correspondent, Jennifer. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I will share about 
Well, a reminder about the uh, Stanford Neurodiversity Summit, which is free event online November 7th to 9th. A reminder of that, the keynote and some of the keynote speakers, uh, Temple Grandin, Sir Simon uh, Baron Cohen, and more. And uh, other, um, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, other like full weekly events actually that are coming up soon is um, there's one on, on November 23rd to November 30th. Uh, who wants to race a one mile 5K, um, 10K, uh, 13.1, I'm, I'm assuming they mean miles. Um, they're participating in um, in Oakland, November 23rd to November 30th. And for more info, you can go to uh, allevents.in. So, and December 5th to December 12th will be, a, there'll be a, an event at Stonestown Galleria in San Francisco, 3251 20th Avenue. Um, sensory friendly event in partnership with Autism Speaks. Um, experience the community at participating locations across the US. You can find out more at eventbrite.com. So again, December 5th, starting at 9.30 a.m. to December 12th, ending at 10.30 a.m. So this is a full week event and um, Anyways, that is my report and thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the latest edition of the Jennifer Brooks book review. Today, I would like to tell you about The Silent Boy by renowned children's book author Lois Lowry, who has twice won a Newbery Medal for her novels for children. This book is set exactly 110 years ago in 1911, when people with autism were treated very differently from today. They didn't even call it autism so far back. They called it being touched in the head, along with some other terms that we now consider too derogatory to use. The Silent Boy ironically focuses on a girl. She's eight years old. Her name is Katie Thatcher, and she is the daughter of the town doctor in a small town somewhere in middle America. And she gets to know a 13 year old boy named Jacob Stoltz. No mention of whether or not he's Jewish. And this boy displays symptoms of what we now consider autism. He is nonverbal, he does not make eye contact, and he relates to animals better than people. Katie hears a story that Jacob took a newborn lamb that had been rejected by its mother and somehow convinced another mother lamb to care for the abandoned newborn. So obviously he has a way with animals similar to Temple Grandin. And that fact becomes important at the climax of the book when Jacob is accused of murdering the newborn baby that Jacob's sister bore out of wedlock. So thank you again to Inclusive World and our wonderful guests today, Madhu, Jaya, and Usha. So this is another segment of Life on the Autism Spectrum. And until next week, I'm Cassindy. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Jennifer Brooks. Stacey Kennedy. Clara Chavierhouse. Madhu Krishnan. Jaya. Usha Narayanan. Mm -hmm.